Before I begin, I'd like to ask you all a simple question. How many students here in New Zealand do you think currently do not have access to a computer? Numbers you, in your mind may vary a lot, maybe anywhere as low as 10,000 or 50,000 or 60,000. But I bet none of you realise the actual number is closer to 100,000. 100,000 students do not possess access to a computer for educational purposes. Let that sink in. I bet that you all use your computer on a daily basis, whether it be for learning, for creating something, for expressing yourself on an ever more interconnected world. And 100,000 people do not have access to a computer to be able to do all of these things. That's a big number. And what's even more disturbing is that 36,000 households with students in them do not have access to an internet connection. An internet connection. Internet, something we deem so important that we consider it nearly a human right. And yet 36,000 houses don't have it and they have students in them. Over the pandemic, we've seen such a great need for access to these things, to a computer and to an internet connection. And I have been on the forefront of that. I've been working with several charities over the last few years to try close the digital divide, as we're, it's being so eloquently put. And it's been a real honour working alongside some of the best of the best. And in to show this, uh, in 2019, before the pandemic, I joined a club in which we refurbished computers. We refurbished 36 computers in 2019. And I was really proud of that. That's a big number. And then the pandemic rolled around, the first lockdown, and we were able to deliver those 36 computers to students who would have otherwise gone without. And that was amazing to me. But then I found out how many people don't have access to a computer. And that just sickened me. And so I vowed to take this little club that I had joined, take it to the next level, to improve it, and to help close this digital divide. And that's something I'm proud to say I have done at Artia College, where every single student last year, and every single student except for approximately 10, uh, possess access to a computer that they can use, not just for school, but also for their own use, to be able to express themselves and create new things. We delivered over 200 computers last year, both to Aotea College and across Aotearoa. And we did that with some really important technologies, uh, such as Pixie, or Preboot Environment, which is a very complex system that you don't really need to know about. But what it does is it streamlines what we do and allows us to do more with less time. And it runs on a server. And one night, I forgot to turn that server off. Which you might think, yeah, that's fine. Except Pixie works by pinging every computer on a network or saying hello to every computer. And it happened to say hello to a particular server that the school has, which holds all of the school's sensitive information, like students' names, addresses, counsellors' notes, that sort of thing. The stuff you really do not want to have out into anybody's hands. And the school found out about this, and they were not happy with us. Uh, so we had some very uh, fun conversations, as we'll call them, with uh, the head of IT, with the principal, with the general manager of one of the largest uh, IT infrastructure firms in New Zealand, uh, and with the head engineer of that same organisation. And we got yelled at a lot. And we deserved it. it we, at the time, we didn't think, this isn't our fault, it's the school's fault for having such poor IT security. But we were responsible at the end of the day, and they needed somebody to harangue about it. Um, except out of that, we got to sit down for an entire day with the head engineer at this corporation. The head engineer who makes well into the six figures a year and who, if the school were to get otherwise to come in, would be billed thousands of dollars an hour. And we got an entire day with him. 
And it was absolutely amazing. We had a massive list of questions of how do we take what we have here and bring it to the next level? How do we use what we've started and allow that to be able to close the digital divide and provide digital equity on the scale that it is needed? And we learned so much from it. It was incredibly valuable. Now you might be thinking, why is this important? You're doing great work, but why? What is the human face behind it? Well, human face is a little girl who goes to a primary school in our area. And she's been going through some bad health issues recently. And her Chromebook suffers some water damage, which we do not advise putting your Chromebooks in pools. They cannot swim. And so they, and so Plumman Primary School came to us and said, hey, what can you guys do? And we said, hey, this is what we do. And so we took apart the computer, we had a look at it, and we determined that it wasn't repairable. And so we went to one of our partner corporation uh, charities um, and said, hey, what can we do? And they said, hey, this is what we do. And so we were able to give this student uh, a computer that she would have otherwise gone without. And we were able to give her not just any computer, but a computer that would that's going to last her both through her like, last year at primary school and into college and potentially even beyond that. And all it took was a simple, quick process. And we were able to deliver something so powerful to somebody who had such a great need for it. And we were able to do this again for somebody else. We were approached and asked, hey, my husband's looking for a job at the moment, except um, the family computer is doing some weird things. Can you guys have a look at it? We said, hey, this is what we do. And so I had a look and Windows was corrupted. It's a semi-common issue. And so we were able to quickly reinstall Windows. It took five minutes of my time, half an hour of the computer sitting idly doing updates and such. And we were able to deliver this computer back to her and to her husband. And we, uh, she came up to us a few weeks later and said, Hey, because of what you guys did, by being able to repair this device, we were able to uh, improve ourselves. My husband found a job. And as such, we were able to increase our socioeconomic status. We were able to find financial security. The power of that is something that blows me away that me spending five minutes of my time that I was able to double a household income by simply doing what I do and doing what I love. And so can you. It may not be inside of IT, but there are so many problems that today's world is facing. So many things that need young eyes to look upon and see what the obvious solution is and actually go for it. So that you, everybody here in the crowd, can actually make a difference. You just need to find a problem that you are passionate about, something that means something to you, and something that you can do to help it. So I promise you, you can help. Thank you.